in the heart of Silicon Valley, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube, covering OpenStack Silicon Valley 2015, brought to you by Mirantis. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Brick. Hello everyone, welcome to Silicon Angles, The Cube. This is our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Jeff Frick for two days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage of again, OpenStack Silicon Valley. This is the second year of the event, hashtag OpenStack SV or hashtag OSSV15. Join the conversation, ask us questions. We'll be monitoring Twitter and of course, crowdchat.net slash OSS. V15. Um, this is a really amazing event. We're here live in Silicon Valley for where all the cloud players are here. Unlocking the infrastructure is the theme. Again, OpenStack, we've been following since 2010 when, when SiliconANGLE was born, and now SiliconANGLE with Wikibon Research and theCUBE have blanket coverage. We have all the videos going back to, to way back when, when it first started. And again, this is our second year. Uh, Jeff, uh, great, uh, great to see you again. Great to be here. Um, and the couple themes here we have, um, Jonathan Bryce up there, really talking about the path to production, laying out the construct of where OpenStack is on the maturity cycle, talking about niche, unicorns, where people are on the adoption curve, and certainly um, mass, accept, mass adoption, highly accept, high acceptance and maturity is virtualization and OpenStack compute. But path to production is the theme, and you're seeing the other projects gaining steam. This is the core theme. This is what it's all about, unlocking the infrastructure. And again, OpenStack, heralding one of the best platforms to compete with Amazon Web Services for the enterprise with cross-functional, cross-platform API support and a huge developer ecosystem and more importantly, the big guys behind it. So we're excited, changing the face of service delivery, ending the infrastructure as a service past distinction and creating 10,000 new cloud services, cloud sections they call it, from Intel. So we have Intel, we have Google, all the top dogs are here. Again, Silicon Valley, the center of all the action. We are here, Jeff, uh, what are you looking forward to this event? Well, John, I, I like the fact that we get to go out to these events and watch them grow. We, we did our event in Portland years ago. It seems like OpenStack uh, Summit in Portland 2013, and, and a lot of those people are, have been taken, taken up, acquired, and as I was kind of recounting this event with George Gilbert from Wikibon, really kind of going through the list, and, and there was a lot of activity last year at this event. You know, Cisco uh, purchased MetaCloud, they purchased Piston Cloud, you know, people are making their plays, EMC, got cloud scaling and Randy Bias, where he went there right after this event last year. IBM just recently acquired Blue Box and Jesse Proudman, he'll be on later. And, and they just announced that they're you know, making Blue Box available, OpenStack as a service, um, via SoftLayer. So that's going on. HP obviously bought Eucalyptus a year ago. Uh, we just had the announcement of Intel put, leading a $100 million investment in Mirantis. So there's a lot of activity going on. The big players are making moves and really looking at OpenStack to be the foundation for a hybrid or private cloud that, that really competes with Azure, AWS, and Google Cloud Platform. Yeah, a couple of the key themes here we're taking notes of we're going to be watching all week and certainly the next two days is web services, microservices, the effect of vendor lock-in. We talk about this all the time on theCUBE. Lock-in was the competitive strategy du jour for most of the big vendors, really putting the customers in a position of dealing with one supplier or a handful of suppliers. That lock-in equation has been completely disrupted by open source and certainly with cloud. We're seeing the impact there. So things like containers, things like microservices, things like Kubernetes, companies like Google introducing really new innovations. Intel is here, and again, OpenStack is a platform of innovation, that is the core theme. And again, ending this notion of infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and we're going to take a historical look down memory lane on theCUBE where we've talked to people who have changed their jerseys, changed their companies, companies have gone out of business, new companies have been born, projects are emerging, this ecosystem is robust, it's healthy, and we're excited to be covering it. And Jeff, one of the things I'm really excited about is to hear where the meat on the bone is. Because one of the key things that made Amazon Web Services really successful was the fact that they basically built on some really simple building blocks. Compute and storage, then added networking, and then added in a bunch of services. OpenStack Web Services is the innovation engine that has really disrupted, certainly public cloud with the number one, and ultimately now in the enterprise. Looking at revenues north of $7 billion just for Amazon Web Services, that is the gold standard in the cloud. OpenStack 
is on a trajectory under the same construct and their innovation strategy. Core building blocks, virtualization, open compute, and then the rest of these projects are quietly moving and taking territory down and gaining steam. That is exactly what happened with Amazon. The question is, is, is OpenStack a day late and a dollar short? I don't know, I don't think so, I think it's solid. Yeah, and there were some, some challenges that, that came up last time we were here, and just as a note, this, this conference, the first time OpenStack Silicon Valley was last year, a one day show. This year it's two days, we'll get an update. Uh, from Alex on our next segment, it's that how many people are registered, but it's growing, but we talked about growing pains. Um, growing pains really is really related to like the college student that's got to learn his own laundry. Now these are not teenage growing pains, these are not adolescent growing pains, but these are growing pains, you know, kind of getting into the real world, and uh, Jonathan has been very adamant in, in being able to highlight specific customers that are now running big workloads on an OpenStack set, I think you interviewed the gentleman from eBay last week in Seattle who said what 20% of their production workloads are now running on OpenStack based systems. So we seem to be at a point of transition. I know a lot of people have kind of poo-pooed on OpenStack. Is yeah. it a little bit late? Randy Bias really had some concerns about product management in terms of the way they're managing the development of this thing, but um, it, it, it seems to be yeah. going. I look forward to the update. Yeah, Jeff, here's the bottom line with OpenStack. With OpenStack, it's about a few things. They have a marketing problem because it's so complex. It's not a one size fits all. There's a lot of things going on. They are doing well. It is growing. It is on, on the right trajectory, in my opinion, based on all the data and all the companies I talk to, both on the vendor side, suppliers, and also the customers running deployment. And again, we are covering the cloud Go to wikibon.com and, and, and talk to Stu Miniman, Brian Gracely, Dave Vellante, David Florio. You'll see the under the hood disruptions in the technology that's ultimately driving a lot of the cloud. And certainly we cover all the cloud shows. We cover all the cloud shows except Microsoft. We'll get that show tuned when those guys let us come in there and broadcast live from Microsoft's cloud event, Azure, and hopefully that'll happen. But more importantly, in October, October 6th and 9th, we're going to be at Amazon reInvent. In Las Vegas, we're going to be on the ground in the center of all the action there to compare and contrast, to compare the vendors, look at, inspect the challenges on the technology side, look at who's adopting, look at the enterprise, where is the innovation, certainly the consumerization of, of IT, consumerization of technology is happening, mobile's out of, out, is kicking butt, cloud now is powering innovation. So Jeff, really exciting times here in Silicon Valley, really exciting times in the cloud business, big data and infrastructure, and the enterprise is hop, hopping, and uh, we're going to be covering all the action here. Stay tuned here at siliconangle.tv. We'll be right back with live coverage, all the, all the action here in Silicon Valley.